Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about iCall. iCall is an event-based, granular, internal automation system on the Big IP. It gives you a comprehensive control over the Big IP configuration and other system functions, allowing you to leverage the TMSH control plane and seamlessly integrating the data plane as well. So if you look at traditional I rules and policies, you have the client and a server, and your traffic comes from client to server across the data plane of the big IP. So you have your routing and switching, and this is L2 and L3 on the data plane. And then you have uh, your performance, security, so app security, you have access, and whatnot. So you have all these other services, and this is all your L4 to L7 services. And so on the data plane, let me call this the data plane. All of this is happening to traffic as it flows through the box. What we're talking about with iCall is the control plane. And this looks like my pen's bad. We're going another color. All right. So the control plane gives you access to make changes to all of these different controls on traffic as it comes through the data plane. And so at the control plane, you have technologies like eye control, whether it's SOAP or REST. And this is, you can run eye control on box, but typically you run eye control on a different server and it interacts with Big IP and it allows you to do much of the same thing. But iCall is a built-in system on Big IP that allows you to do much the same, but it's closer, it's on, it's on Big IP, but there's also an interaction between your data plane and your control plane. So you can make decisions on your data plane uh, from the control plane. And uh, the mechanism to pass data between the two is iStats and your iRules. So the iCall system has three core components. You have events, you have handlers, and you have uh, scripts. Okay, so at a high level, an event is the message. Some named object that has context, whether it's key value pairs, um, a scope, like a pool or a virtual, uh, an origin, so whether it's from iRules or a policy or a system daemon, and then a timestamp. And events occur when specific, configurable, predefined conditions are met. Okay, so that's events. Handlers initiate the script, so events will pass off to, to a handler, and a handler initiates a script and is the decision mechanism for event data. There are three types of handlers. So if we look at handlers, we have triggered handlers. So an event can trigger a handler. Um, you have perpetual. And so if you think about like a, a system daemon or like a, something's watching a folder to do something and if there's a, a change in that folder or like your uh, big IP fails over, that would be a perpetual handler. And then you have periodic, and this one's on a time. So whether it's 10 seconds, an hour, a day, a week, or whatever, you can have a, a periodic handler to, uh, to do that. And then finally, uh, script. And so the script is actually what, what the system will do based upon uh, the events and, and handlers. And so the scripts are TCL-based, and that is T 
PMSH scripts. Now they live in a specific uh, part of the config in sys iCall, but it's a TMSH script that just happens to have a very specific purpose uh, for the, the iCall system. Now, the, the very basic flow of iCall is you have an event that will hand off to a handler, handler, which will then trigger a script having spelling problems today. And, and so you can have a very basic flow, but then you could also have a, a more advanced, um, a more advanced flow. So before you come to event, you might have another handler up here that kicks off a script which kicks off an event, which kicks off a handler, which kicks off a script. So there's a lot of different ways that you could handle that. And so use cases. What, what would you use iCall for? And there are a ton of use cases. I mentioned one, like you have a big IP fails over. Well, why did it fail over? And how do you, how do you get around to handling that scenario? Well, typically, uh, as an operator, big IP fails over, you start investigating, you run a quick view, you might upload that to iHealth to open a case. So you can have, um, you can have iCall kick off that quick view for you. Say you have a bunch of 500 errors coming back to you from, uh, from your servers. You might kick off a TCP dump. Hey, what's going on? Uh, for security, if you have HTTP throttling from a particular source IP, you might pass from an iRule via iStat saying, hey, this source IP is bad news kick it down here to the control plane, which kicks off a, a, um, a, an iCall uh, event, and the script will then add that IP uh, to a blacklist in ASM or AFM. And so lots of different use cases. One I wrote up in an article, and I'll share this, is to disable an interface on a pool, pool member availability threshold. So if you have 20 pool members, and the threshold needs to be 75%. If you drop down to 14 available pool members, uh, you disable an interface on the big IP, and that might, uh, you know, make the big IP fail over. And that, maybe you might say, well, that's not a very uh, effective way to handle uh, a pool failing, but it was a particular customer use case that I, that I built that solution for. And so, a lot of different use cases for iCall, very powerful to be able to marry the data plane with the control plane. And so, highly encourage you to get out there, learn about iCall, I'll link resources in this video. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll see you out there in the community.